Okay. Uh, this is Doug Stout. It's March 20th, 2015. I'm here with James Fullen. Uh, Jim, we went over some of this, but went, I didn't have the tape on. Uh, you were born November 20th, 1929, and you said you were born in Hammerton. Hammertown? Yes. And now where was that again? The end of Swans Road. Okay. And then... I don't think Swans Road exists anymore. I think part of Swans does, but you you think it's the different Swans that was around now, or do you think maybe the road changed a little bit? I have no idea. Okay. Um, and you said there were, what, five houses? And five I... houses in the blacksmith shop. Okay. And a horseshoe. Okay. And then where did you end up going to school? Um, I was in the children's home. Oh, Okay. And uh, went to Madison Elementary, from Madison Elementary to um, Lincoln. Okay. And from Lincoln to Newark High. Okay. So, so you ended up coming down here to Newark High School. Mm -hmm. And then what year did you graduate? 47. Okay. Um, and then what did you do after you graduated? I first went to um, Johnson Bible College to be a minister. Okay. Found out that I wasn't a minister. After they expelled a couple for sex, they couldn't forgive them. They expelled them. Right. So I quit. Okay. And then did you come back home? I could never live with saying one thing and doing another. Right. Uh, I came back home. Went to the army, one extreme to the other. Right. So when did you go in the army? Do you remember the year? Uh, 1950. Okay. So you enlisted. Yeah. Okay. I was in Bible school from 47 to 49. Where was Johnson's Bible School? What? Cameron Heights, Tennessee. Okay. All right. So you came home and you enlisted in the army, and then you were a paratrooper. Yes. So you you volunteered to jump out of planes. Right. What made you volunteer to jump out of an airplane? What made you? fifty bucks? Okay, the extra pay. <laughs> okay, that seems to be a common thread among paratroopers. <laughs> That's probably why they did it. Fifty bucks and a pair of silver wings. Okay, so um, where did you do your basic? Fort Knox. Okay, and it, did you do your jump school there also, or no, Benning? Okay, so you went to Fort Benning for jump school, and then who were you with? Uh, were you with there the, to Campbell. Okay. And then were you with... With the 11th Airborne. Okay. 11th Airborne? 187th Regiment. Okay. So you were with the 187th. Yeah. Okay. And they were called something that began with an R, I've seen. It seems like Raxon. Am I right or not? Yeah, okay. All right. I don't know what we were called. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you're with the 187th... Um, and so promoted to Sergeant Enfield. Okay. My biggest fright was, will they obey? <laughs> and they did, or did they? They did. They did. No problem. How how did you do? It was all in my head. How? Uh, I mean, what was jumping out of an airplane like the first time? I say I don't remember it. Okay. I remember when I hit the ground. Okay. It was at night time, and uh, I thought I bumped another parachute, and they told you when that happened, it was all over. So I couldn't even open my release. Right. For I was so weak. <laughs> I just laid there and trembled. Some medic that went back to the, to the group. I missed the truck. Okay. But you, but you obviously didn't wash out. You obviously made it through. Did you have to do five jumps before you got your wings? Yeah. Okay. So then once you got your wings, where did they send you? I had a total of 33 jumps and three combat. Okay. So when Korea, when Korea started, they sent you over to Korea? Or where were you when Korea started? Um, I was still Camel. Okay. 
when it started. I'm not sure exactly what year we went over, but uh, I was over there a year and a half. Okay. And then you made how many jumps over there, combat jumps? I had a total of 33 jumps, three okay. combat jumps. Okay. Um, do you remember any of the combat jumps, the, the, the campaigns you were in? What, did they have certain names, or do you remember? No, this is just south of Pontiac. Now, the newspapers give them names. We never got the names. Okay. <laughs> they, they never said this is where you're jumping and no, it wasn't written on the ground. No one just... announced that this was this campaign. Okay. We just did it. <laughs> right. So you were over there. Um, is there anything you'd like to share of your experience in Korea while you were there that you'd want people to... I think my most frightful night, if you're a member in history... They would blow their horns all night long. Okay. And uh, so I was on guard duty. So I prayed they would quiet down. And they did. And I was really frightened. Because then you didn't know where they were. <laughs> <laughs> did anything happen or they just... No. Not, they all was quiet that night. No. I was scared to death. That's the most frightened I was. Do you... Um, do you remember, I mean, they talk about the cold. Were you in the areas where it got yeah, really cold? It was cold all the time. Really? That's where I learned to drink coffee. I hated coffee up till then. But it was hot, so I drank it. Now I'm hooked. Right. Go on and sweet. <laughs> so jumping out of a plane when it's that cold, is that, I mean, I would think that would be, have its own challenges. Because, well, the wind got you, but you were wrapped up pretty tight. Okay. What kind of what kind of load were you carrying when you jumped? I mean, it was pretty heavy. Was it? You had your rifle and uh, your supplies, and that kind of thing. They would say, "Stand up, hook up, stand in the door." You, know, you count off first. Always bothered me counting off because the guy behind me would say, "Okay," <laughs> and he would look. <laughs> So, um, and you say some of the, were any of those jumps at night, their combat jumps? Or were, they, were your combat jumps at night or were they during the day? Most of the time, two of them were at night, one uh, late in the evening. Is, is either one's more scarier than the other? Since you, because I assume you were jumping behind enemy lines. Yes. Yes. They took pop shots at you. I'll bet. You would always lose two or three. Now, did did they have the anti-aircraft ability to try to so that you had to worry about being in the planes, or was it really when you jumped that you had to worry about? They were not too um, supplied. The third wave of soldiers, and they were 14, 15, 16 years old kids. They come without rifles. They pick up the rifles from the fallen. Okay. And I hated to see that. Well, yeah, I'm sure you did. There wasn't much you could do because about we it. We knew we were firing at uh, some without rifles. <laughs> Terrible. But you couldn't control it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not like you could pick your targets that easily. The hardest thing is walking. How long, how long typically, or was there typical that you were, they would send you in before somebody would get to you or they'd pull you out for those campaigns? We were never held up. We were really hit and uh, moved out. Okay, so you hit and kept moving. That's right. Yeah, that's the secret back behind the lines. Keep moving. So then... I'm glad that didn't happen during combat. The time I thought I hit the shoot. <laughs> oh, I'll bet. I'll bet. I bet you, yeah. Um, was anybody else from Central Ohio? Did you run into anybody else from this area that was over there with you? Yeah, but I don't remember. I just wondered. It, just, it seems like guys do run into people. I would know some first names. 
we didn't bother with them last night. Except in training, everyone was called by their last name. Yeah. And it got to be by nickname. You always had a nickname. Seldom they ever use your name. Do you remember what your nickname was? Yeah, I used it for a stage name, Jim and John. Okay. All right. So you were in Korea about a year and a half? Yeah. And then then you were shipped back overseas, or back here? Yes. To the United States? Yes. And then were you done? Is that why you came Discharged back? Discharged in 50. Okay. Haven't touched a rifle since. Not even to hunt? Didn't even want. No. I don't know. <laughs> right. Did, um, did you stay in touch with anybody from your unit? Have you had any reunions or anything? Right after we kept in touch. I had no touch since. Because I went from that to music. Right. And then from music to teaching. Because I I was had hit the records, but you couldn't have a family. Yeah, I want to talk to you about in, that. In those days. So is that, so once you got out of the service, is that what you then you went to focus on with your music? Yeah, I, I wrote a few songs, worked down at Hillbilly Park, okay. and featured there. Was signed with uh, WLW Hayride, and then went over to um, Greg Foley's show. And one time on the Grand Ole Opry, we had two hits, Rosie's Gone Again, and What Kind of God You Think You Are. And What Kind of God You Think You Are recorded by Sun Whitman and Ernest Tully. Wow. So we were on top, but you couldn't keep kids on the money you'd make in country music then. You right. could now. Yeah. Not then. So I uh, got a job at Licking Valley in high school. My first year, $1,000. And then taught and realized that that's what I really was. A teacher. Right. So we stayed with it. We were hired by Keith and then Columbus State and then Ohio. North Campus. So what all did you, I mean, did, my obvious thought is that you probably taught music, but did you teach no. music? Okay. Taught English, ethics, and logic. Okay. He's got a, an article in the, the book there on that, if you'd like it. Yeah, we'll make a copy of that for the okay. for your file so, so that we've got it. Um, but all that time, you still kept up with your music, right? All the time oh, you yeah. were... What I'd like to tell you about is one time my most, well I did, I told you about that one time. Okay. That was uh, when the horn stopped playing. Right. The other time was I looked over and saw, we called him Chinks then. He was standing there aiming at me and pulled the trigger and I fell. But I woke up. He must have missed, I don't know how, because he's right on top of me. But his rifle did go off. Oh, yeah. Fortunately, he didn't follow up on anything and no. make sure. No. I don't know how long I was out. And again, a medic took me back to the squad. So did you, did you ever teach history? No. No. Except tutor. Okay. Did you ever t have a chance to talk to your students about your experiences, or has it been something that you really didn't want to talk about, or? It took me a while to even want to talk about it. Okay. Mainly because you still see faces. Right. It, in Korea, well, we don't remember Korea as well as, as no, other wars. Not. Um, of course. I want to sort of them. brief in comparison. Yes, but bloody. <laughs> very very bloody. Yeah. Very bloody. And I mean, so. Especially when the Chinese came in. We were almost to the border. They came in, we did nothing but retreat to Sean. 
finally stop. Took us forever to get back to the line again. And that's where the line is at. Now. There were just so many of them, is that, was oh, it just yeah. the amount of them? They did it by number, they didn't do it by, I don't even think most of their people were trained. They were just boys. They were on a golden food run, I don't think. Of course, I can't tell the age of the Asians. They look a lot younger than they are. Yeah. Well, and you didn't have a lot of time to sit and stare either, probably. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like you were having coffee with them or anything. Uh, you didn't see, you saw uniforms usually, but they were all over the place. And that's what they do. They send them in waves, first wave, second wave, third wave. And you had these horns they used all the time. They really used the bugle, except it didn't sound like a bugle. And did did they keep blowing those during the during the fight, or oh yeah, they just blew them and all night long. So it, so it was a psychological effect. They were yeah, about. for their own troops, and to us, right? Called fear. <laughs> I'm sure. Because even though they weren't all around you, the horns were. Kind of reminds me of the story of Gideon in the Bible. You didn't know where they're coming from. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So when they, so really, you had the war won until the Chinese came across. Yeah. Yes, we did. Plus, MacArthur had to go clear to the border. He even wanted to go over the border to the Chinese, and he's probably right. Truman wouldn't let him. Right. I, I, I've talked to different World War II vets that have different uh, feelings about MacArthur as a commander. What's your feelings as, of MacArthur? As a, I mean, what did you think of him? Well, he didn't do anything in the Bay. Of course, I had nothing to say about any of that. Right. I was way down the line. <laughs> but as far as his leadership and I think he was right. Okay. His problem was he didn't care how many men he sacrificed. This was all strategy. And nothing like looking up, knowing you got to charge, frontal, a position, especially a hill. <laughs> But we were most fortunate because we were behind the lines. We didn't have up front, right. front battles. We did pretty much what we wanted to do. If, if I don't know if I count fortunate jumping behind enemy lines and being surrounded. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure I'd call that real fortunate, but I, I understand what you're saying. Well, all three times uh, we had the element of surprise. Okay. They did. They had no idea you were coming. They had no idea. And. Uh, we hit where they didn't expect. So. It worked out. Of course, I didn't even know what was going on. I just did that little thing that I was supposed to do. Right. Yeah. <laughs> the big picture is kind of out of right. out of your sight at that point. You just didn't heard hear about it later. Do you know what we just did? Right. <laughs> right. Exactly. And where we were and everything else. Yeah. What? One one place I would have to know. This was a music uh, munitions dump. And they were blowing up these grenades and things and she didn't know what the other fellow was going to do. <laughs> right. <laughs> it worked out well. I was down once, like I told you, and out. Did you ever get wounded? No. That's good. No. Too puny. I did uh, run into a Honeywell, though. 
did, you know what a Honeywell was. And I don't know what a, I think a Honeywell is, but you tell me what. Cuban manure for the rice. Oh, that wasn't what I was thinking Honeywell was. <laughs> that wasn't what I was thinking that was. Because they had all these ditches, and they kept the manure in. Right. For their rice. I ran into one of those. Uh, so you had, you were covered in that. Yep. Stayed that way till the shower that evening. And that was a field shower. Yeah. So it wasn't like a nice hot. No. <laughs> but it was good. <laughs> I bet it was good at that point to get it off of you. Yeah. Well, they provided new uniforms. Well, that was good. <laughs> if it fit. <laughs> so it was just kind of, you got what they gave you. That's right. <laughs> Boots, too? Is that the same way? It was shoes? No. The airborne combat boots are pretty sacred. You have your own boots that you lace them. Okay. And a way of lacing them, polishing them, they had to stay shined, no matter what. So even after you went all through that manure, you had to clean them up? That's right. You had to have them shined. That's an airborne tradition. Jump boots and parachutes. Did you, did you bring any of that back with you? I know some people brought some parachute silk or some people, you know, brought I brought boots. back a combat jacket. I really did. Okay. Eye jacket. You, you've got you grandchildren. Yeah, you've got grandchildren. You've got, grandchildren. You've got great grandchildren. Yes. What, what would, what would you want them to know about your Korean, your service in Korea? What, the most important thing that you think you could. Yeah, I did feel it was important. Even though I volunteered for the money. Right. <laughs> That's because, remember, employment was pretty bad back here. So I took off the government. Well, there were a lot of guys looking for work. But philosophically, it was one extreme to the other. Yes, it was. I mean, going from Bible school to. But it was still a lot of discipline. Oh. I mean, so the discipline part of it probably wasn't. Airborne was probably more disciplined than most regular army. Because you, even though you signed up for airborne, didn't mean you were automatically going to stay airborne. No. You had to pass yeah. tests and pass it and maintain. Were you out? Were you athletic growing up? No. No. I've never been athletic. <laughs> All in your mind. Yeah. You're more mental. So, I'm a word guy, so not, not a number guy. So the basic of training and stuff was, I mean, it stretched you. The running and everything? Yes. You had doubts whether you could do some of that. But you had a sergeant who was sure you were going to. <laughs> did most of your guys, most of the guys you start with, made it through? Or did they, did oh, they you wash up? Two or three that didn't make it. Right. Especially those that weren't physically. You always have some that pass physically that aren't capable of doing these kind of things. All right. Especially push-ups. I'm surprised how many could not do push-ups. How many push-ups did you have to do? Do you remember? Fifty was the minimum. Okay. And you count them off out loud. One, two, three. And there was no cheating. No. <laughs> and when he was looking at your uniform. Looking over for shaving everything, he's still in your toes. <laughs> he come up and stand right on your toes looking at him. And you didn't say a word. <laughs> or flinch. That's right. That right, takes a lot of discipline. I don't know if I'd have that much discipline. Well, that's what it was about, discipline. Mm -hmm. Do you think that? They don't have that in the Army now. All of that's gone. And I was surprised. They didn't care what they called you back then. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you think, though, that that discipline that they gave you in basic was what helped you in Korea? You learned self-confidence. You learned you could. That's what's important. Mm -hmm. So it probably helped you throughout your life. Yeah, eradicated doubt, which helped me right on through college. 
one thing you didn't do, doubt yourself. Don't let yourself do that. Where did you end up going to college at? Ohio State. You went to Ohio State, your degrees from Ohio State? I surprised that I was hired by Ohio State. Why? Because they did not to be graduated from. Oh, really? And I was at the campus. Okay. That evidently made the difference. I worked at Ohio State and COTC. Okay. And you retired from there, did you? Eight years. Okay. And you've done other things. You've been what, mayor of Hanover? Oh yeah. How many how long were you mayor of Hanover? Twenty three years. Mercy. You saw some changes out that way, I'm sure. Oh yeah. We had a dam built, put in sidewalks. Oh yeah. Had real business meetings. Robert's rules, mm -hmm. which hadn't happened before. <laughs> and we had a pretty good village. What made you get involved in politics part of it? I was asked to. Okay. So you were a pretty busy man there for a while, weren't you, with being mayor, teaching, and your music career? And honing down two other jobs to keep the kids. What what other jobs did you have? Uh, oh, it's Corning and Rockwell, inspector, both places. How how did how did you juggle all that? I don't know. <laughs> Not now I did it now. I was gonna <laughs> say, my goodness, I mean, Rockwell owns Corning and teaching and yeah, I would uh, work at night and teach during. And sleep had to to get to the college. And when did you sleep? What? When did you sleep? We slept about six hours. It's gonna say, wow. <laughs> During the job. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever you could. Yeah. And are you still writing music? I know you. I still sing for the church. Okay. Are you still writing anything or? Writing's funny. It comes to you in spurts, right? You quit for a long while, and then suddenly you'll start writing like crazy. And that's the way it's been. I just wait on it. Yeah. You can't write anything unless you're inspired, right? And those kind of things, inspiration, go to. I know people who try to sit down and write songs. So I just stare at it. That happens. Can't force it. No. Not at all. It's usually in your head to begin with. You just have to put it in meter and rhyme. Did, if the idea is there. And did you write the music to? I mean, the music and words. Yeah. You wrote everything. Yes. How, what instruments can you play? I'll have to get you an, al uh, an album. I could have brought it, but I didn't think of it. Well, that's okay. How many instruments do you play? I tried piano, but I couldn't do it. Guitar. Okay. Guitar came natural. Really? Piano just <laughs> were never natural. Was was your were you, any of your parents were they musical or do you know where this came from or? I didn't have a father. I was at the home. Oh, that's right. That's right. I did have a, a mother. I remember she rented a farm and we went out to um, um, watch them work. Okay. To a farm. She was getting a couple of boarders to make it and she got us through school. Do you, do you remember if she had any musical or ability, or she was probably too busy running the farm to? She couldn't even sing. Couldn't. She terrible. <laughs> I remember trying. <laughs> no, I <like> Scott. <laughs> no, Scott's very good. At right. It. <laughs> yeah, Scott. When he sings, reminds me a lot of you. Yeah. So you guys have about the same pitch. He plays guitar and sings. Right. He and his brother. DJ Dukes also. Yeah. So it, it's coming down the line. Yeah.
He even sings some of my songs. Amazing. Didn't get the words right. <laughs> <laughs> he makes them up as he goes. <laughs> I'm pulling his leg. Is there anything else you want to make sure that, that we know about your life? or I mean, It doesn't have to be about your veteran, or, but, or, or could it be about your service? I do the um, little flyer for the Northtown Conway. Okay. We call it Northtown Community News. So you're still active doing it? Yeah, I was on the trustees. I was even president of their condo association. Oh, I'll bet. <laughs> I'll bet. You can't make everybody happy, but you are not being married, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> we kept Hanover pretty happy. We were able to get three government grants for the streets. Mm -hmm. Went through two floods and one snow. Got buried. Remember the floods? Probably before him. Hmm. The snow was probably what, 78, 77? Was it the blizzard? Yeah. 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 So, what, what did you bring here, Scott? The scrapbook. Well, a lot of the military stuff is gone. Okay. So this is. Yeah, I had a Korean ribbon. All Jimmy John stuff. So this is when you were on Red Foley, or with Red Foley, or yeah. on it. This, this is when we were cutting records. And you had a fan club? Yeah. Good one. Said we were kind of on top, and just couldn't make it on the money. So you were you were recording albums or records. Mm -hmm. You know how many? How many records I recorded? Yeah. Oh, you've got some of the folders in here. I would say about twenty. And we've got some later albums that we cut under. Back in the 90s, we started again to do our music. Then I retired in 96 because Ronnie got a heart attack. And we quit to be with her. Right. How long did the fan club last? Oh gosh, up until '89. That's quite a while. He was really active during the 1950s, 60s. I, a lot of people, you know, talk about Hillbilly Park around. I, I mean. Do you play out there a lot? All the time. Did you? Was that was that just open on the weekends, really, or how? Sunday. Did, Sundays is how they did that. Everyone spent their Sunday down at Hillbilly Park. Afternoon or the biggest it? day was when Red Foley was there. You couldn't even get in. They were online clear up to Dayton Road. So after, so what is it an after church thing, or would it be during after church? After church? And then one o'clock on till just till it ends, or till after dark, or well, and on all night. <laughs> till about 
show. Made Monday morning kind of rough, didn't it? <laughs> Where did you record your albums? Was there someplace around here to do it, or did you have to? Uh, we first went to um, King Records in Cincinnati, and later on we went to Studios in Nashville. Okay. So you did record down in Nashville. Yeah. Our last albums were. We had three albums we did in Nashville. How many? How many guys were with you? We hired a band. We hired a Nashville band. Okay. Got to choose the musicians. I'll get you one of those albums. That's pretty neat. No, not many people around here can say they had a country western career. <laughs> yeah, we could have had more, but couldn't afford it. Well, you say the times. Work for hard to give it up. I'll bet. Had it turned down a lot of gigs. How far did you end up going as far as performing? I mean, were you all over the United States today or the... Well, we were at um, Red Bullies. Uh, sure. Where was that at? That was our Jubilee. Okay. On TV. Okay. Missouri. All right. And uh, we were at the Midwestern area. West Virginia Barn Dance and the Dominican Barn Dance. Dominion. It was the um, Virginia. Okay. Called the Dominion. Had some great comedians there. Anybody we'd know? Was the lady's name there at Grand Offering? Nellie Pearl? No. There was a guy, all he had to do was walk on and everyone would laugh. <laughs> Duke of the Duke. Okay. Were there any recordings that you know of made of any of that? No. No. A lot of my records walked off. Really? Yeah. From friends. <laughs> <laughs> I guess something could be said that they wanted them. Right. I, I, I don't know, maybe so this is... A lot of them I don't have, I wish I had. I know. A lot of songs recorded by artists like Red and Zeke Turner, Get Your Dad Burn Your Fingers. Will it be a better place if it were a farm? I think the name of it was a farm name. That's where I started teaching English. <laughs> um, we had uh, Brenda Lee do on the tour, and George Jones do not even. Yeah, I think I saw that. I, I think you did. <laughs> um, you need to get get somebody looking on the internet for those copies of those for you. Okay. Just, they, they probably exist. I'll, I'll give it to my executive. That's here. right. Let them start looking because... He does have um, Slim Whitman's that kind of got the book to our... Except for only no copy things. 
I think he'd worked around it too. Time. <laughs> So he's, he's, a, still, he's a cop, he's got that kind of mind. Yeah. <laughs> he knows the law, so he, he can take care of it. <laughs> we'll keep his identity secret on this just in case. Right. <laughs> secret agent. That's right. Well, Jim, I appreciate you taking time to come in and talk to us. And I hope it's worth it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's worth it. I mean, what you did in Korea was worth it. And it's worth what you've done in this community. And since then, I mean, if you think of how many people you've taught and how many people have enjoyed your music, and the what? hardest part is some of the students come up to me and shake my hand. Glad to see you. I don't even know who I'm talking to. Right. You <laughs> you can't be expected to. They only had to remember one teacher. <laughs> you had to remember. And all of them have changed since I saw. Well, sure. All of them. Some never change. Right. Some people do, and some people don't. But like I say, you've done an awful lot in this in Licking County and the community and that. So I'm glad to get you get you in here. So I appreciate you taking that time to come in. To um, really out of business was the new 16. Oh, is that what happened? That's what ruined Hillbilly Park. Yeah. Close it down. You know, now when when somebody goes and sings and stuff, they've got all that merchandise and stuff they sell there. I mean, did you have stuff like that? that I mean, could you sell your records there? My records, yeah. Sell my records. Autographed them and, yeah. and all that. The one that sold most was Rosie's Gone Again. Is it? Do you, do you have any idea how many songs you've written? A couple hundred. And are they all... Some of them I don't even remember. <laughs> are they all... I don't know how I don't know what you do for music copyright, so that somebody can't steal Ashton, it. Ashton Publishing. Okay. Ashton. All right. So they're all set. So somebody can't steal them, but somebody could find your music now and record it if yeah. they wanted to. And then do they? They would then pay you. So if Trace Atkins found one of your songs, and basically what happens is they ask permission. Okay. And then you're paid a quarter royalty. Because you don't have a choice. <laughs> no, you aren't going to get rich on it, huh? You're not going to get rich on it. On writing music. But that's neat that somebody can still find your music. But I think I was meant to be a teacher. It sounds like it. Well, and what? You turned out two kids that are teachers. Yes. <laughs> Three, really. Okay. My boy, um, Mark, uh, Ashley, the daughter, is a teacher. Okay. And then Nate, the teacher, was me. Okay. And um, Becky, my daughter. Right. Becky yeah, I, I, knew, I knew Becky and I knew... I know of Mark. I've emailed Mark back and forth. Um, and because Mark's the principal of yeah, Mark Young. Yeah, because I was looking for, there was a plaque up there for veterans I was looking for, and he was giving me information on that. Mm -hmm. So I knew about those two. I didn't know about the other. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'd say education's in the blood. I think so. This is a college. Yeah. <laughs> but he, he got He's you, educated. He went to college. He got your music ability, too. Yes, he did. Yeah. She also got my music. Yeah. And I'll be perfect. <laughs> well, I appreciate it. I really do.